Here we have a markdown file. Markdown has this clean syntax that makes you want to use it for everything. And that's also why we have MDX. Now we can put more things on markdown. In this talk, we are going to see how flexible MDX is and how to use it for any kind of content and any kind of layout. But first, I need to show you how this works. We have a small Next.js app that has the MDX plugin and we have a page that imports the markdown file. The real magic happens on this import. Here the MDX loader transforms the markdown into a React component and the page just renders that component. If we want to change what's rendered, we can use the MDX provider. It has a prop that let us override any of the default components. For example, here we are adding a purple border to all, to all the H1s. A special component we can override is the wrapper. The wrapper is the component that wraps the content. You can see how we are using it to add a border around the whole content. But the cool thing about this component is that in the children prop we get all the content from the markdown file as React elements. And React elements are just JavaScript objects. Here we are rendering the wrapper children as JSON. We are only showing some of the properties. I hope you can see what the JSON looks like. It's an array. The first element is an H1. The second a paragraph. And each element comes with an MDX type. We can and we will use that MDX type to extract information about the content. For example, we could get a list of all the H1s from the children and render it as a table of contents. This is a very simple example, but it shows the pattern we are going to use on the rest of the examples. In all of them, we'll have two steps. First, we extracted some data from the children and then we pass that data to some layout component. Keep in mind that this, this runs on every render. In most cases, it isn't a performance problem, but if it is, you can move it to a plugin and run the transformation on build time. I usually write content that has steps, like tutorials or any type of walkthrough. Markdown doesn't have any specific syntax for grouping things in steps. But we can use MDX to extend Markdown and make up our syntax. The implementation of the step component we are using here doesn't matter. We are just using it for grouping elements. If you are new to MDX, this may not be the best introduction. Um, MDX is typically used for embedding interactive components in Markdown. But here we are taking a different approach and using it more as a syntax extension for Markdown. Now based on the MDX file that has steps, we can write another wrapper component. In this case, the children prop will be an array of step elements. So we can keep track of what step we are showing using React state and let the user change the current step by clicking a button. Okay, now I want to show the same content, but with a different layout. There's a technique called scrollytelling. You may have seen it on some website. As the user scrolls down, there's some part of the layout that sticks to the screen while the rest is scrolled away. Let's do that. Since this is a landing talk, I won't show the code of the layout component. I'll share the link to the repo later if you want to see how it works. The scrolly telling layout component takes two props. One for the left side that can be scrolled and another for the sticky part on the right. When the user scrolls to a new step, we show the corresponding element from the sticker list, which for now is just the step number, but let's change it to so it shows something from the MDX file. Suppose we want to show some code in the sticky part of the layout. Since there isn't any specific syntax for this, we'll make up our own. 
For example, we put the sticky part as the first element in the step. Now doing some array transformation, we extract the list of steps and the list of tickers and then pass them to the same layout component. So now the code on the right should change as the user scrolls to a different step. Just for fun, I have a terminal component that animates code transitions. So we can use it for the stickers and let it handle the step changes. For the next example, let's add some media. Instead of changing the steps using the scroll, we can synchronize the steps with something like a video or, or an audio and change the steps as the media progress. To do that, we'll change the MDX. We need to specify the media file and the time range for each step. Once we have that, we can extract it from the children on the wrapper and pass it to another React component. This time it's the talk layout component that will solve all the syncing for us. Now, now you should see the steps changing every time I snap my fingers. Some of you may have noticed that this looks similar to the layout of this talk, the talk I'm giving right now, and it is. This talk was built using this same technique, it's all MDX, always has been. On the left, you can see the, the MDX for this specific step. And here is the next one. We have four different elements for each step. We have the video file name and timestamp, the URL we are showing on the iframe, information for the code we are highlighting, and even the caption for the step. And that's all. That's my talk. So what's the takeaway? Well, don't be afraid to use MDX for something different. You can use it to make your own dialect for almost any kind of content or layout. I leave you here the links to the repo of the talk. Not the slides, but the talk itself. You run Yarn Dev and you can watch this talk again. Also there's my Twitter and the components we used. Most of them come from a new project I'm working on, Code Hike. It's a set of tools to make code walkthroughs or explaining code in general. Thank you.